a video review from Elbros Film. Yeah. Hey Elbros Film here with our first video review of 2010. This time we're looking at Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Nest Global Alliance Dirge. Not only is he my first Conehead figure, but uh, he's also my first Nest Global Alliance, as we can see with the logo there. The sticker, which I'll explain in a minute. And the all-new packaging, which I don't know if you can see that, but that does say N star, E star, S star, T star, Global Alliance. So I'm saving this packaging. Uh, cross promotion for Armor Hide, which they did not have there. If they did, I would have bought him too, because uh, I didn't get Landmine from the first movie. And the stuff, the obviously telling you it's a subline. This is the the Global Alliance is the equivalent of the Allspark powered from the first movie. As you can see, the tech specs are now green. Uh, and there's Dirge. I love how they call these these um. Uh, pardon the expression, his spinning nipple gimmick. I love how they call it spinning thrusters. Spinning thrusters. So, and two launching missiles, and I think he's supposed to be a Harrier jet, but oh. All right, let's open him up. And well, no, let me explain this sticker first. What you do is they have the Bumblebee Soundwave two pack, and both are repainted. I think one's a repainted Cannon Bumblebee, and it's just a Soundwave repaint. Um. Kind of like he appeared in the DLC for the video game. But um, anyway, you buy that, you peel off the back of the box to the side, get three of these stickers, mail it into Hasbro, and you get a Takara level Ravage. It's like blue, yellow, and it has chrome on it. So good, Hasbro's not going cheap on us. But anyway, oh no, I'm sorry. There's the sticker. That's not the sticker. There's the sticker. Ah, I'll have to keep it. I don't plan on getting that Bumblebee in... Soundwave 2 pack, but you never know. So let's open. And here is Dirge in his Harrier jet mode. At least I think it's a Harrier. Yeah, he's classic G1 colors, which is very nice. And since my Revenge of the Fallen shelf is currently getting fill filled up, um, I think I'm actually going to display this guy with the universe figures because I'm comparing his robot mode with them, and he blends in quite nice with the universe guys. And um, whenever I get uh, Bludgeon, he was originally supposed to be universe, released under the universe line. But Hasbro, for some reason, I guess, cost-cutting, decided to release him under Revenge of the Fallen. When I get bludgeoned, he's going over with the universe. Uh, we have the two missile launchers here. As you just, these can go under his wing. That wasn't. That didn't work. He can go under his, his wings as we, like so. There is wings. And there we go. That's how he came boxed. So, all right. I gotta start the transformation because I don't have any other planes in jet mode. I don't have any. Yeah, I don't have power glide in jet mode. So, all right. To start the transformation, you take off the wings in the side air intakes. And I noticed this is gonna be a problem getting the wings pegged back into the sides. You just don't want to stick. But no. Oh yeah. Hold the bottom and front landing gear in. Uh, now take these two crotch pieces and bring them together like so. Like that till they click. Bring the legs down. I'll rotate them forward. Get the wing out of the way. Now this is quite interesting the way the foot forms. Uh, you just pull it out, flip that down, rotate it around. It's very unique, as we can see here. It's kind of on like a slidey hinge joint deal there, right there. Uh huh. We just take the wings here, take them back, fold them down, like so. Right there, like that. The wing, fold it down, back around. Oops. And there's the legs. All right. Next, we wanna. This is where it starts to get interesting. Take the, oh, nope. We have to disconnect this. Pull that off. Get the arm out. Uh, I guess we can fold up this panel. Now just, that just falls up on his arm. Lift this up. You see that? That whole bit just lifts right up. Turn that around. Take the faux 
uh, cockpit chest piece like that. Spin the arms so that the shoulder piece is facing forward. And you get this arm here. Open up the cockpit. Oops, it's upside down. Open up the cockpit. Flip out the hand. That's cool, he has an opening cockpit, so it's extra realism. Like so. Oh. Now, Hasbro, Takara, whoever designed this figure really got creative. Because look, there's his cone head. Right there. That's his cone head, so you can have him stumpy dirge. Or you can take these side air intakes. You just slide that whole piece up. And in doing so, epic head reveal. There we go. Yep, here we go. Epic head reveal with the side thrusters there. And then just take these bits like so, fold them out to the side, and peg those up into the back of his shoulders. Uh, I did not read the instructions, but actually I just watched uh, P.O. and Sean Long's reviews of this guy a couple hours ago, so I know what I'm doing. And that is more or less dirge in robot mode. Very, very nice head sculpt, very nice cone head, and it can rotate 360 degrees, slightly look up and down, but that's just amazing that they could engineer that to do that. The arms can rotate 360 degrees at the shoulder, moving in and out of the body, bend at the elbow, rotate at the elbow. Well, that this wrist has some motion. I think this... No, that still got some decent articulation on that arm. He has a waist, but only if you pull down the fake faux chest piece. Legs forward, back, in, out. Uh, bend at the... Well, yeah, you can bend at the knee, but you have to move the wing out of the way. Uh, rotate at the upper part of the hip, and the feet have some nice swiveling there. So really, he makes up for knees with his ankle joints, which is nice. Uh, for the weaponry, we can attach these to his uh, forearms. Well, not really his forearms, kind of like his muscle area. <sighs> Damn it. And then just, yeah. Like so. And I thought he had one on this arm, but maybe that's it right there. Yep. And there's Dirge with his his missile launchers. And he looks pretty kick butt with those. Uh, his mech alive gimmick. Alright, spinning thrusters, gears, whatever you want to call them. Spin. Okay? They spin. And that's just awesome. I love the mech alive uh, gearing. It's just that because I'm really into the computer animation stuff, and I give props to all the animators who spend hours and hours on it and this kind of stuff, and it's awesome that I can now have that in my in my figures now. Yay. Yay Hasbro, yay Takara, yay ILM. And digital domain. Let's do a 360. Back folds up nice like that, so there you go. The G1-ish wings on his legs. Speaking of G1, I actually have Season 2, Volume 2 over there. I picked up a Target. I got this guy a Target. I got this guy. I don't want emails saying, where'd you, guy, where'd you get Dirge from? Okay, I got him a Target. He's eleven ninety nine. So, yeah, definitely a worthy figure. Here, very nice. I don't know if I'm going to get thrust. I've seen him at the store, but he's just a redeco of Breakaway. And I'm definitely not getting Ramjet because it's a horrible redeco of a really bad to be figure. Starscream. So, definitely a worthy figure. Go get it. Definitely worth it. And if you see Bludgeon, get him because the Voyager Bludgeon. Excuse me. Get Voyager Bludgeon because he was not at my target, nor was Recon Attack Ironhide. Next time I see Bludgeon, I'll see him. I don't know about Ironhide, though. I'll see. All right, then.